Areas of interest in the Pacific Ocean on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. around the wide world of tropics. From the weather bulletin for April 18th. No active tropical cyclones right now and as such we're on unclassified status so nothing serious going on right now but there are one or two rumblings of potential tropical cyclones in the coming five to seven days. We'll pick that up in just a moment. But first, look at the Atlantic Ocean. There's nothing going on here, but it's 44 days until hurricane season. A nice, big, uh, non-tropical cyclonic low there moving through the Great Lakes region. Looking very interesting there, but I assure you nothing tropical in that, and warnings are quite um, tempered there. In the Western Pacific, a 20% area of interest, Invest 92W, expected to move towards the northwest, eventually towards the Mariana Islands. Uh, at the moment though, near Pompeii in Micronesia, and a near 0% chance for a system that's located just off the coast of uh, New Caledonia, and that's heading southwards towards New Zealand actually, and could intensify a little bit as an extratropical cyclone, and could impact the islands with some gale force winds. Elsewhere, there's nothing going on right now in the southern hemisphere or anywhere else around the world. There's a look at the Indian Ocean and you can see that it is pretty desolate with only a few little areas of convective activity, none of which really affecting land. So overall, the tropics are indeed fairly quiet. Let's take a look at some of the satellite imagery in more detail. First of all, the last 24 hours, a little indicator here as to what we've seen in some of these areas. Red denotes really high rain amounts, uh, high rain rates, and that is certainly potentially leading to flash flooding in these areas. But to be honest, that's mainly limited there to the rainforests of Central Africa. Here is some satellite imagery from the Himawari 9 satellite visible occurring across most of the uh, disk here. And you can see in general just lots of cloudiness but not very many systems. And here is one of them though, uh, the area of interest in the Southern Hemisphere just off New Caledonia there. You can see enhanced rainfall over the islands and a bit of convection blowing up on the right hand side there. But as you can see the centre position of that floater, that is where this supposed center of this system is it doesn't really have one um, but if it did it would be around there it's got a little bit of rotation uh, but at the moment it's not looking very likely that we'll see any progress with this system at all radar looks interesting there definitely with the rotation visible uh, with some enhanced rainfall particularly over Noumea right now actually the main city on New Caledonia here is the invest in the Western Pacific, just south of Pompeii, that uh, fairly round shaped island there. Um, and the frames are dotting around a little bit, uh, but that's because the floater position just changed a little bit. But in general, there's a little bit of convection, not too much going on to be honest, and certainly no signs of a center forming yet. Sea surface temperatures in the Eastern Pacific are well on their way, up to 30 degrees already in a few locations there off the coast of Mexico. In the Atlantic, the Gulf is uh, starting to warm up there as well, off the Florida Keys into the Florida uh, Bay region. Very warm sea surface temperatures already and up the Gulf Stream. Uh, the temperatures are building across the Atlantic. In the Indian Ocean, the Bay of Bengal is building up nicely as well with 28 degrees commonplace across the whole sub-basin with the Arabian Sea not far behind and a few hot spots there as well. Southwest Indian Ocean still very warm, uh, temperatures are receding just a little bit over the mass serene islands uh, but still decent enough for possible late season activity but we usually don't see it. And in the Australian region, I mean the Ilsa effect there has really started to show, those sea surface temperatures have decreased quite a lot, it's the Gulf of Carpentaria now that has the highest sea surface temperatures probably in the world, getting up to about 32 degrees Celsius, and just on the southern part of the Solomon Islands through northern Vanuatu, temperatures are warm near that system in New Caledonia, around about 27, 28 degrees, it's got only a short amount of time before those sea surface temperatures fall below the threshold, and over there in the western Pacific for that other area of interest, it's in the deep latitudes there so temperatures will be good enough for its whole duration to be honest as it heads eventually towards the Philippine Sea. Sea surface temperature anomalies look like this right now warmer than usual in the 
main area of the western pacific eastern pacific has a gulf of cooler waters there in the middle part but in the eastern part looking okay el nino effect starting to appear there with that massive warm anomaly off the coast of predominantly peru and ecuador the Gulf of Mexico and the main development region also looking pretty hot right now with sea surface temperatures looking decent. Uh, OHC, the oceanic heat content here, still decent amounts across those areas around Vanuatu and Fiji but not much near New Caledonia. Eastern Pacific building up nicely with those units well into triple figures now and in the Western Pacific decent conditions there continuing to build particularly in the Philippine Sea and definitely lots of OHC for that invest right now. Checking the GFS computer models forecast here over the next five days. This is what it shows for that Western Pacific system. GFS has been sort of been wanting this on and off for nearly weeks now, I think. Different systems. Uh, but there it is. A very brief spin up. Does it get the tropical storm status or not? That's a big question mark there quite similar to its track actually it does a little swivel to the northeast and then it will eventually turn westwards like a question mark almost and then continue on towards the uh Mariana Islands. Now, look towards this system here, dropping south from New Caledonia, with tropical storm force winds there, probably won't be tropical by that point, or indeed subtropical even, and through into the North Island of New Zealand mainly, but also affecting the northern part of the Southern Island, uh, and you can see there with strong winds possible for those western coastlines. There it is again, that sequence. This can still change quite a bit. A peak intensity there, almost towards hurricane equivalent strength on its way there, uh, but it won't manage to strike at that full intensity. Looking across a lot of these Micronesian islands, they will be getting significant amounts of rainfall, particularly the islands around Pompeii. Not too many to its north, but one or two atolls to the northeast that could get high, very high amounts of rainfall as this system stalls in that region and then turns westward. So regardless of development, we could be looking there at four inches on Pompeii Island itself. That's 100 millimeters with potential maximums well above 800 uh, millimeters there. Um, not 800, sorry, uh, 400 millimeters, but possibly much higher in some isolated locations. And further west towards Chuk as well, uh, we could be looking at 200 millimeters maximum there. And in Guam, we're indicating 0.8 inches right now, which is just around 20 millimeters from this potential system. But you quite clearly see the rain profile of that storm as it moves along northeastwards and then west. Longer range, you can track the further progress of that system there. It's curving slowly towards Guam, but it doesn't redevelop on that five to 10 day period. And some maybe little bits of rotation appearing near the Philippines there as well, uh, that may or may not be from the same system or same energy from that system. But there it is, we're tracking it here, moving westwards just south of Guam, continuing along there. Another little area of rotation just to its west that doesn't get itself going near the Philippines. Scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store. We have all of our usual items, including full season and individual storm animations. And we also have our still waiting for Hone t-shirt, which uh, I'll probably be wearing in my retirement home at this rate. In the Silly Range, we're looking out for something here in the South China Sea much later on. I wonder if this comes from the same energy as Invest 92W, actually. I think it might. Uh, but there it is, this eventual system in the early days of May. Very long range. I wouldn't put any faith into it. But there it is, a potential typhoon forming there uh, in the South China Sea. It wouldn't be too unusual to see some kind of activity like that for this part of the season early on. Um, so we'll keep monitoring that and see if it makes any progress uh, regarding that forecast. You can chat about it and any other weather around the world on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat. We had a lot of Aussies join us recently during Cyclone Ilsa and it's nice to have you on board with us as well. On this day, a storm that did affect Australia, Cyclone Alistair, on April 18th, 2001 uh, there. A system that didn't manage to show an eye, at least on this day, but it was bulking up with that convection, and it did reach a uh, Category 1 hurricane equivalent intensity just on the other side of the 19th in the early hours of 
the following day there and that picture was taken in the early hours of the 19th local time near its peak intensity but Alistair building up on this day in 2001 without any company around the world there. Back to this year and the first name in the Atlantic will be named Arlene in the Eastern Pacific, Adrian and in the Central Pacific of course we are still waiting for Hone. 15 storms so far this year which is a little on the low side but let's not forget that Freddy could probably account for three or four different storms. Western Pacific's next name is Sanfu, North Indian Ocean is Mocha. And we're still waiting for either of those to turn up. Sanfu has been waiting for a while and almost got the name the nod a couple of times this season so far and in the southern hemisphere next up is jasper in the australian region fabienne in the southwest indian ocean and lola in the south pacific that's all from our tropical weather bulletin we'll be back again tomorrow night <laughs>